Good morning and praise the Lord. Uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to be able to share the Word of God with you again. And I've really been enjoying our times together as we've been studying God's Word and, and having fellowship. And uh, I just pray that the Word of God has been enriching your lives and helping you to draw closer to Him and helping you to be more like Him. I just pray that uh, some of the things that we've been uh, sharing together that uh has been encouragement to you and you've been able to take it and encourage others with it as well and uh, we're going to just uh, continue uh, studying and uh, just uh, thanking God for uh, the good things that's coming from it because uh, it never returns back void and uh, we're just going to uh, study today in Ephesians chapter 6 and we're going to touch on more today on spiritual warfare and spiritual warfare is a part of prayer too. Uh, we had studied uh, on prayer last week and we studied the Lord's Prayer and we talked a little bit about uh, fasting and praying and I like to build hit on that again sometime or another but today I was kind of led to go into Ephesians 6 and Ephesians kind of starts out talking about the relationship between children and, and their fathers and their parents, and then on to bond servants and uh, their uh, slaves, which would rent, like translate today, maybe your employer uh, or your employees or people that you're in business with, people that you work with, uh, people that you work for. And I, I thought it was kind of odd that Paul first started talking about these relationships. Then he went on into the spiritual warfare. And whenever things like this is put together in the word of God, there's always a reason. So uh, you always know that there's some kind of connection. And in, when you study about the whole armor of God, you study that, uh, you know, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against those principalities and those uh powers and those rulers of darkness that are in high places and so that's what that's why it's like okay this is why it's together uh because i got to thinking because some of these relationships like with your children or with your parents or people that you work for or people that work under you or etc sometimes these are the relationships that can have the most conflict uh, at times and uh, it was just a good reminder to let us know that hey our, our battle is not against flesh and blood it's not against that person it's those powers that are working behind there whether they're wanting to call confusion or make make you doubt your faith or whatever's going on and the word of God is so powerful that not only is God so good that he's there for the good times, the bad times, the big calamities in life, but he's there for the everyday routine there too. God cares about, you know, your daily routine when you get up and when you pray and when you prepare your meals or you clean your house or you take your kids to school. All, all of these things matter to him. And so I thought it was, you know, kind of fitting that they was talking about relationships with people before they went into spiritual warfare. And, and this is the kind of route that we're going to take today. Those, uh, you know, uh, seeing things like God sees them and seeing through the eyes of God and not through uh, our emotions or what we're feeling or if we're feeling anger, disgust, etc. You know, actually looking through it like you know, the, with the, like the, like through the eyes of God, help us to see people that uh, that are you know crisscrossing our lives on a daily basis. Help us to be able to see them the way Christ sees them. Christ loves them and dies for them, even though they may be irritating to you. You know, so but but we still have to love them anyway. And so that that's kind of like the route that we're going to be studying today. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open us up in prayer. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, and Lord, we just thank you and praise you, and we just magnify and exalt you. 
uh, for this is the day that you've made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we just thank you and praise you that we have an opportunity to be able to study your word. And, and I just pray that your Holy Spirit would just illuminate it and to teach us and to teach us what we're to know out of this word. Help us to build plot to our lives, Father, and help us to build encourage and teach others as well, Father. Father, we just want to give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. And, and Lord, I just pray that this word will go deep down in our hearts so that way we may not be able to sin against you. And, and Lord, I just pray that we'll uh, continue to decrease and that you'll increase in our lives. And Father, we just want to give you all the honor and the glory and the praise for it all. And just bless this time that we have together just studying your word, Father. And I just ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And we are, we're going to get uh, started right in on Ephesians chapter 6. I'm just going to get my verses here pulled up. I'm studying now the New King James Version. And so some versions might have some wording that's a little bit slightly different, but the meaning is still there. And we're going to start out in verse 1. We're going to do the entire chapter today, hopefully. It says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and may, may live long upon the earth. So this is a promise. If we obey our parents and honor our parents, we'll live long upon the earth. And it says, And fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them in up in the training and the admonition of the Lord. And that is true. Uh, so this is a two-part way. You know, children are to obey their parents and they are to honor them. But hey, fathers, and, and I say even mothers too, don't provoke your children to wrath. Don't be so strict and don't be so hard on them that you actually turn them away from the gospel and that you harden their hearts and, and, and you just make them feel angry toward you, life, and God. Uh, when you look at the word discipline, that, that the word disciple comes out of that word as well. The root word behind discipline or the disciple means to teach. When you discipline your children, it should be a teaching moment. And so I'm not going to sit here and debate how you should discipline your children, you know, whether you're, you know, believe in spanking or you don't or you do time out, however you discipline your child. You know, now I'm against abuse. You know, you do not beat your children, you know, but your children do need to be disciplined. But it needs to be done in a matter of love and it needs to be done as a teaching moment. No matter what your child has done, you should love them unconditionally because our father loves us unconditionally no matter what we do. You can make it clear, I don't like what you've done. I don't like your choices, but I love you. And and then you need to be able to teach them why so that way they can see where you're coming from. You know, you can't do this because it's dangerous or you can't do this because it goes against God's word. You can't do this because it will bring trouble in your life. You know, sit down and explain to your children why we have these rules, you know, and that will help them to understand they probably still will not like it. But they will understand and they will understand and in time as they grow older, they'll know that you had their best interests in heart and that you was just trying to protect them and to do right by them. And so so this is very pivotal. Children do need to obey and honor their parents, but parents also need have their part to do as well. Uh, they need not to provoke their children to wrath and uh, and do right by them and take care of them and not be abusive to them, uh, you know, so that way, you know, they will have a good, healthy relationship with other people, but also, too, they'll have a good, healthy relationship and a knowledge of who God truly is and not some, you know, a hard master that's in the sky that's ready to beat them over the head every time they do something that's wrong, you know, and, and ready to send you to hell. Uh, so we need to be loving with our children. You know, we need to discipline. But that word discipline means to teach. So make these teaching moments. And that way it will strengthen your bond with your children and your relationship. And as you go on down, then it talks about bond servants and masters. It says bond servants, you know, so uh, 
be obedient to who are your masters according to the flesh. You know, they could be your boss or whoever, you know, your you know, pastor, etc. With fear and trembling, in sincerity of heart as to Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. So in other words, when your boss is looking, don't, you know, just don't be a good uh, employee when your boss is looking or with anything else. You know, a, a true servant of God is doing the right thing even when somebody is not looking. So that, that's what it's talking about, the dealing, your own dealings, that you're doing the right thing whether somebody is looking at you or not. Uh, and it's, you know, so not with thy service, service at, as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Because our work is unto the Lord. With goodwill doing service to the Lord and not to men. That's what we was talking about. Knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. So, uh, you know, it, it's all about doing the right thing even when people's looking. And you know what? That boss of yours may be an ungodly person or whatever you need to pray for him, you know, and still do the right thing because your work is unto the Lord, not unto that boss or whoever has authority over you for whatever reason. You do your work as an unto the Lord, no matter what they're doing. And that could possibly win them over. So uh, the, the, so we need to keep these relationships now in mind as we start studying into the full armor of God. And it's, but then again, there's instructions to, you know, uh, the masters or your boss or whoever's in authority over you as well. And you masters do the same things to them giving up threat uh, giving up threatening knowing that your own master is in heaven and there's no partiality with him so you know if you are a boss and you do have employees or if you have people that's underneath you you know in in a church wherever you know let them know that hey you need to uh treat them right because your master's up in heaven and he has no partiality. He loves them as much as he loves you. You know, no matter where they are in life, you know, don't treat your employees like they're beneath you. They're not. There is no partiality with God. There's no Jew. There's no Greek. There's no male. There's no female. We're all equals. I don't care what color your skin is, whatever. We're all equal in God. You know, so, so, so if you do have employees or, you know, you do pastor, well, most of you here, you know, that, you know, is studying, do pastor church, treat your congregation with love. You know, uh, don't be, don't be one of those pastors that beat sheep, you know, love your sheep and encourage them and teach them, you know, and lead and guide and direct them in the ways of the Lord. And so finally, we're going to get into the full armor of God. So now that we've laid this foundation of, you know, our role in relationships, uh, you know, now we're going to study about the full armor of God. And it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful uh, to this end with all perseverance and supplication of all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, 
that I uh, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And that's true. And it says, you know, be strong in the Lord and put on the whole armor of God. You know, just like in the morning, you don't partially get dressed. You don't go out the door without your pants on. You know, you don't go out the door without a shirt on. You, you don't go half dressed, you know. And so we have to put, so spiritually we need to put on the full armor of God. And this way we can stand against the wiles of the devil. Because we don't wrestle against people. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against those powers and those spirits and, and the things that drive those people. You know, and for us, you know, and, and you know, that don't make you exempt from your sin. Because you know what, you, you got a choice to make whether you're going to let the Holy Spirit and let God lead your life or are you going to allow yourself to be a uh, puppet of the devil? You know, that that you do make that choice. And those spirits, you know, the ones that you submit to is the ones that are going to drive your life. And so we, 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 we want to be led by the Holy Spirit. We want to have the mind of Christ. Uh, we want to... Uh, see with full discernment but th these are choices that you make and so so but when you're dealing with people remember it's not against the flesh and blood hey what what's driving that person to that you know and sometimes it, it's pain or uh things that happened to them in their past uh you know so try to see through eyes of compassion what it may be going on in that person's life or that person's history that is making them uh, feel this way, do this way, not trust, da 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 da, what have you. Because uh, sometimes there's reasons. Uh, there's scars and wounds and things, places in people's lives that they need to open up their hearts and let God just come in and touch and heal those places. So keep that in mind when you're having your dealings with people. Uh, and says, therefore, take up, in 13 says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And and, and it, there, it is a daily battle. It, it really is, you know, uh, to do, you know, what is right in God's sight? You know, we're battling our flesh. We're battling, you know, the spirit of Antichrist that's in the world. You know, all, all of these things, you know, you know, is out there. But then so is the Holy Spirit. And he, and he will, and God's word promises he'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you. So we can take comfort in that. And I, I love the whole armor of God. If you look at it, there's armor that's covering every part of the body but the back. You never turn your back on the enemy. You never run. You have offensive weapons and you have defensive weapons. And then you have armor that protects you. Uh, so, But you never turn your back on the enemy. Never. And if you notice, there's nothing that is on the back. And it says, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. And in some translations, it's called the belt of truth. You know, hey, you need you need your belt to be able to keep your pants on. You know, <laughs> so, but yeah, have that truth. So that, that way, you know, you're not, you know, exposing, you know, parts and things that you should be not, not. And, you know, being found with, you know, the old expression that we use in the States with your pants down, you know, it's like, okay, you got caught up in, in to this thing, you know, this, you know, whatever you were doing, drug dealing, adultery, whatever, you know. And so when you get caught, we have an expression here in the States, you got caught with your pants down when you was doing something you shouldn't be. So keep that uh, belt of truth on so that way, you know, uh, you don't lose your pants. So, <laughs> so that, that's just a, you know, something here from the States. And then, you know, but have your waist girded with, uh, with truth and then put on the breastplate of righteousness. You know, that, that's the armor that goes across the chest that protects your heart, you know, keeps them fiery darts away from your heart. Keep your heart pure before the Lord and keep you walking in love. 
and having shod with your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And even in the Old Testament says, how beautiful is the feet of those that brings good news. You know, so, you know, so you got shoes for travel, you know, the, you know, for those hard, rocky roads, those valleys, those mountains, and you have the gospel of peace going with you, no matter where your feet takes you, you know, uh, Wherever you put your foot, God can give you the land. God can give you favor. So uh, you have your feet covered, you know, for your journey now. And above all, taking the shield of faith. This is your defensive weapon, that shield of faith. So which you will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And what's so neat about a shield, you can have in your hand and you can move it to block them darts. You can move it wherever you need to. Uh, to protect yourself. So use that shield to uh, to protect you from the fiery darts of the wicked ones. You know, uh, whenever somebody says something, you know, mean or hurtful or whatever, you know, take that shield of faith in and protect yourself from that fiery dart. And, and you know, so that way it doesn't pierce your heart or any other part of you. And it says you take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, that helmet of salvation, you, of course, you put it on your head. It protects your mind. It protects your brain. You know, uh, it, it protects your face. So that, that helmet of salvation will help you to keep the mind of Christ. And, that, and that's what we're aiming for. And the sword is the spirit. That is your only offensive weapon. And it is the word of God. You know, even Jesus, when he was tempted in the wilderness, he would say, Satan, it is written. That's, that's the only thing he would do. He, he didn't get combative with him. He didn't argue with him. He didn't debate with him. He just said, it is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. And that's the only way you can, you know, that, that's the only way that you can fight. It is written. So that's why it's so important to know the word of God. And it says, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And then here it goes, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Uh, you know, if you're spirit filled, yes, that means, you know, basically praying in the spirit, praying in tongues. You know, so that that's part of your sword of the spirit, knowing the word of God and spending that time in prayer, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. You know, we, we pray for ourselves. We pray for each other. You pray for your church. You know, you pray for everything. And for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I'm an ambassador in chains, that I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And you know what? That applies to us as well. You know, wearing this full armor and using our sword of the spirit and praying at all times, it can it will help us to speak the word of God boldly when it is needed. You know, well, and no matter it's no matter what you're calling, we're all called to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, whether you're a pastor or not, or whether you're an evangelist, a prophet, a teacher, you know, little uh, sweet grandma. We're, you know, I don't care who you are. We're all called to be ministers of the gospel in one form, fashion, or the other. We all may have different callings, but at the end of the day, it's to all bring the people to Christ. That's what all of our callings do that work together, to bring people to know, to come to know Jesus Christ. And and that's the end of, you know, that that's that's the whole purpose for everything, any of the fivefold ministry gifts, any of the lay gifts, you know, whether you're a deacon or, a, you know, a, an usher or whatever you are, or you're just a plain housewife, or you're, you're just a husband that goes out and just works every day to provide for your family. We're all ministers of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we also learned, uh, you know, in part of Ephesians about the bond servants and the masters. There's no partiality in him. So no matter what, I, I don't care if you clean toilets. You're just as valuable to God as the president of your nation. You know, and you just need to do whatever God has called you to do. And that's important to him. And then, then it goes on down to 21. Uh, but 
that you may also know my affairs and how I'm doing. Uh, and, and, and Paul's closing his letter here, uh, says that, but now that you may also know my affairs and how I'm doing, uh, tenacious, a beloved brother and faithful minister and the Lord will make these things known to you whom I have sent for, uh, for this very purpose that you may know of our affairs and that he may comfort your hearts. Peace to the brethren and and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be to all those who love the Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. And that's the way how Paul closed out his letter. So he he you know in this letter he was talking about relationships like relationships with parents and children relationships between like a boss and employees or anyone who has like authority in any kind of capacity then he was talking about having the full armor of god so that way you can uh, avoid these fiery darts and you know he stressed that your battle wasn't against flesh and blood but it was against principalities and and powers and, and rulers and wicked places uh so he was letting us know that, you know, hey, our battle is not with people. But then he wanted to close, you know, because, you know, people's hearts needed to be encouraged because, you know, the church was under so much persecution. Uh, people was becoming martyrs for their faith. Paul was in and out of prison and different things. And so Paul would send servants, like in this one, like tenacious, just to go comfort the people and, and let them know that, hey, what's going on with Paul, how Paul was doing, you know, and uh, Paul was still living the faith, you know, uh, so that way to, to keep their hearts encouraged with all the things that they were battling with. And so, um, you know, n nothing is new underneath the sun. People in the early church had struggles just like we do today. Sometimes they, you know, uh, the battles may look a little different, but it, it's still from the same enemy. And so uh, the enemy's always trying to destroy the church. And, you know, God, but, and, but he knows God's not gettable. So the only one he can try to attack is his kids because we're made in his likeness and he's in his image. And so I, I don't want you looking for like the devil under every stone because he's not omnipotent like God is. God can be everywhere. He can't. But now he's got little minions and demons and, you know, umps and spirits and, you know, things like that that does a lot of his bidding. But the devil can't be everywhere. Devil is not equal with God in no matter or capacity. Uh, you know, Satan is the father of lies and he is you know the root of all evil don't get me wrong you know um you know don't be ignorant of his devices but also know that he's not more powerful than god and only one third of the angels fell so that means there's still two thirds on our side so uh everything is still stacked up against him and god is good and god is gracious uh, and so don't live in fear of him, but don't be ignorant of his devices. Keep your eyes open and keep your, uh, and keep your, uh, keep the word of God near to your heart at all times and pray for discernment and pray for wisdom and pray for guidance and keep that full armor on. So that way you can avoid the fiery darts of the devil you know, and where, and like I said, if you notice, go back and read through here, there's nothing that covers your back. So never, ever turn your back upon the enemy. And so I hope this kind of encourages you today and to kind of make you think uh, about, you know, you know, picking your battles. You know, your battles are spiritual ones. Your battles aren't against your loved ones. It's, they're not against your neighbors. They're not against with people that you work with. Or they're not even just strangers that you meet every day. Your battle is not with them and it's not against them. Uh, your uh, enemy is Satan. And your enemy uh, is all, you know, the, you know, the enemies of the cross. You know, so... Uh, so love people and hate sin. <laughs> so, but uh, I, I pray this has been encouragement to you. I hope you've learned something from this today. 
And I, I hope that you go back and you read Ephesians 6 for yourself. Because we can sit here and talk about things and teach things. But sometimes when you take these verses later and go study them for yourself, the Lord will show you uh, revelation and things that are just personally for you. So uh, I go, you know, I encourage you to go back and study Ephesians 6 more. In fact, study the whole book of Ephesians. You can't go wrong with it. it it's, you know... All 66 books are a good book to read. So, uh, but yeah, I want you to be encouraged and I'm praying for you guys and I love you and we'll go ahead and we'll pray. Father, we just come before you in the name of Jesus and Father, we just thank you and praise you for this time and your word and, and help us to reflect upon your word and help us to remember your word. Help us to apply your word to our lives, Father, and help us to keep the mind of Christ and help us to keep uh wearing the full armor of God. And Father God, I just pray that you'll just lead and guide and just direct us and help us to be a light and encouragement to others. Help us to be a vessel and to be a good servant that brings people to Jesus Christ and, and not one that drives them away from the cross. And, and Father, I just pray that uh, you will uh, give us wisdom and leading God all of our footsteps and leading God all of our dealings with people, Father. And Father, we just want to thank you and we just want to praise you and we just want to magnify you and glorify you. And, and Father God, I thank you and praise you for my brothers and sisters in India. And I just pray that you'll just bless them and give them favor and keep them in good health. And Father God, and that you'll supply and that you'll take care of all their needs this day. Father God, I just pray that you'll just wrap your arms around them and just let them know how much you love them. And Father God, I just pray that uh, you just encourage them and that you'll just strengthen them, Father. And Father, we just want to uh, just magnify you and just glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys, and I'm praying for you, and I hope to share the Word of God with you again soon. Bye-bye.